Hey, Indy. Hello, hello. <laughs> How you doing? I I had my earphones on blast, and so when you said hey, I was like, whoa. All right. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I, I'm doing well, doing well. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to go over a lesson, and this isn't necessarily specific to your games. Well, it is and it isn't. So um, it's something you definitely need to know more about. So we're mm -hmm. going to go over it. Um, okay. And it is shapes. Okay, so we're going to go over these, and we're going to go over them one at a time. Uh, but we're not necessarily going to go over them in order, because the daddy of all shapes is letter L. L. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So it looks kind of like a parachute, or some people call it a sandal shape. Um, mm -hmm. So you see two, and then two, and then one. And basically, this is a perfect, perfect eye shape. and. Mm -hmm. Many, many of the other shapes that we'll be going over are add up to L eventually. Or are are parts of L. Okay. So yeah, this is a perfect eye shape in the middle of the board. Um, yeah. So that's that's the granddaddy of the shapes. Letter L. The parachute shape. The parachute shape. Okay. It's it's tilted on its side <laughs> right now. But uh Okay, so now we can start at the start. Uh, letter A, do you recognize this shape? <laughs> yes, all too well. This is the shape that has been the bane of a lot of my games, at least when the opponent plays it. For me, it's fine. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so it is called a panuki. A panuki. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the, the saying is a panuki in the center of the board is worth 30 points. So if that was okay. in the middle of the board, and it's a great shape for making eyes in a corner. As you can see, that's two eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's a wonderful shape. You've got eye shape. Um, it's often the result of t capturing a stone, and so having having a perfect eye like that in the middle of the board is radiates influence out from it all over the place. So that is a panuki. Uh, letter B, I always forget the name of this, but it's basically a knight's move into a knight's move the other direction. It's kind of like a long triangle, but what this is, is an ideal connection shape. Okay. And so you're connecting, uh, let me, let me grab a tool here. You're connecting the square stone to the triangle stone. Square to the triangle. Okay. Yeah, so it's basically a large it's basically a large knight's move, but it's a reinforced Kilton Ninja says this is the Panther shape. Uh, that sounds right. Sure, we'll call it a Panther. <laughs> Wait, what what was that what was that super knight's move, that Japanese word for it last week? It started with a T or something. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> a large knight's move is called an Ogema. Ogema, okay. So a Kema is the knight's move, and an Ogema okay. is the large knights. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a panther shape. It is a nice way to connect stones together if you need to. And you'll see this on the outside of some Joseki. Letter C is a very nice shape as well. This is called the tortoise shell, I believe. Basically, mm -hmm. this, is, this looks like the result of two stones being surrounded. Mm-hmm. And captured, but it's the tortoise mm -hmm. shell. It's a very strong shape. It's got a full eye in the middle, and it's easy to expand either direction um, mm -hmm. to make a second eye. It's very nice in the center. It's very nice on the edges. It's it's nice all around. Okay. Letter D. Most pe most beginners know the name of this shape. What? Do you know the name of the letter D shape? Uh, the bamboo. Something with the bamboo. Yep, it's the bamboo joint. The bamboo just, joint. There we go. <laughs> bamboo connection, bamboo joint, however you want to say it. Basically, it's like two reeds of bamboo standing up. Okay. Thank you, D. Ferret, for showing me that in the library. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can see there's a link on this page to Sensei's library that has shapes and connections. Mm. Um, so, you can review these at your leisure, and it has more written about it if you like to read. Um, you can do that, but, um, yeah, the bamboo shape, it's a strong connection between the two groups, 
Um, and the only thing is, if it's all the way surrounded, it has one less liberty than it looks like. Mm -hmm. Because if, if the opponent wedges, then you have to connect, right? Mm -hmm. When you're all the way surrounded. So it mm -hmm. can, can be a little short on liberties sometimes. Oh, okay. B is the big bulge, says Kilted Ninja. He must have looked it up. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, D, E. E is just an extension. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just two in a row. It's, you know, those two stones are never going to be disconnected, right? It's a very, very, very strong shape. It's a good shape. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you're like, yeah, sure, basic, right? Just put st two stones next to each other. Uh, <laughs> I'm absorbing, okay? I, I, yeah, I'm, it's all I'm, good. The reason why I'm not saying anything because I see a lot of shapes, so I'm trying to understand all these shapes without, you know, confusing yep, myself. Yep. So, you know, yep. so, letter F is just the Kosumi, the diagonal. Mm -hmm. um, also a great shape. When you're running away, you either want this or the next one. Letter G is the one space jump. So if you're running away, if you're surrounded and you're running out to the center, the only two moves you should be considering are the diagonal, letter F, or the one space jump, letter G. Okay. So never I a mean, knight's move. Not, no. Not, no letter not, H if you're running away. Correct. If you're running away, okay. one space jumps or diagonals. Knight's okay. moves can be cut. Knight's moves are for um, surrounding on the edge, and knight's mm -hmm. moves are for attacking, never running away. Mm -hmm. um, now I say never and only of course there's going to be exceptions right but 99.5% mm -hmm. um, of the time diagonals and one space jumps are your friends <laughs> so okay. F and G that's for running away so as you pointed out hey hey Banniverse raiding with a party of 10 welcome welcome raiders uh, we are going over shapes with our friend Indy Tin here. Uh huh. <laughs> so, okay. As you mentioned, H is the knight's move. That's for um, surrounding along the edge. It can be for connecting along the edge as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, it's for attacking or surrounding your opponent to kill them. Mm -hmm. not, at not attaching to your opponent, surrounding your opponent. Okay, so knight's move are good for surrounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Knight's moves are good for attacking. Okay. okay. Letter I is basically a square. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty strong shape. It's fairly unassailable. You're going to get two eyes if you have this shape, likely. Because you can jump left, you can jump right, you can jump up. Mm -hmm. Or make, make a dog's face in those directions. <laughs> So it's it's a really strong shape. All of these are good shapes. I'm not putting okay. bad shapes on this list, okay? <laughs> these are all good shapes that you want to make. I was wondering and, where the empty triangle was. So. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Good Golf asks, asks a good question. Where is the horse face? Uh, I didn't put a horse face on here, interestingly enough. There's a horse face? Yeah, it's, it's like the dog's face, which is letter K. But the, the point of the triangle is one space up. Mm, mm, mm. And it's it's a little weaker than the dog face, which is letter right. K. Uh, letter J, I consider this a table, a type of table shape, but it's like an extended table. Um, and it's it's another very strong shape for making eyes. Okay. And so as you're playing your games, you don't just want to attack your opponent. You want to attack them with good shapes. Okay. And then when you're connecting, like if you're connecting from like over here to over here, mm -hmm. the two circle stones, you want to imagine mm -hmm. the shapes that will get you there. And then mm. play, play one of the stones within those good shapes. Mm. And this is the reason I'm, we're, we're going over this is because if you make good shapes, while you're while you're building your bases and you're attacking your opponents, then you're less likely to be counterattacked, and um, your shapes will just in general be more flexible as you mm. plan out your patterns. So, 
the shapes are essentially a way to build a better efficiency with your stones. At least that's the way I'm understanding it right now. So better Correct. efficiency, yeah. you're able to defend easier, you're able to surround your opponents easier. Uh, and if we have any variations from those shapes, then it allows your opponents to come in and pretty much thwart your shapes. Essentially. Right, exactly. Mm, okay. In general, if you make if you make good shapes, mm -hmm. um, your groups are more likely to survive. Got it. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's it's just a little more efficient to make good shapes. If you mm -hmm. go a little farther, they're going to be invaded, and it's okay to have shapes that can be invaded um, as long as long as you play flexibly enough and work with good shapes as you respond to those invasions. Mm. But um, yeah, we're going over these shapes just because I really would like to start seeing more good shapes in your games in particular. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that you have overall bad shapes, but I would say there's room for improvement. So Obviously. Yep. Yes. Uh, so J <laughs> is a type of table shape, and letter N, which is next to it, is another type of table shape. These are both really quite fle flexible. Um, they're great for eye space. And yeah, as we see letter L, um, a lot of these shapes can end up making L. Like N directly translates into letter L if you just kind of flip N it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, let's see, you can see letter K in letter L with the two mm -hmm. on top and the one in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. You see a knight's move in letter L, you see a Kosumi letter F in letter L, you see a one space jump in letter L, you see... I see the letter... turtle shell in letter L, or uh, letter L in the turtle shell. Yep, I mean, part of it, sort of, yeah, 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 yeah. And then... It has a but... Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, thinking about that shape is is a great way to... Uh, to connect your stones together eventually. Mm. And, you know, a lot of these are just parts and pieces of of the letter L shape. So it's something to consider. And letter M, let's let's not forget the hanging connection or tiger's mouth of letter M. That is a wonderful shape. It's very flexible. It's a great way to connect things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. And there's another... Oh, there's a lot of things going on in this on this page. Now, this had connections on it, but mainly I just wanted to go over shapes for today because um, this is a lot to take in, and we have a lot to review in your games, so, mm -hmm. uh, or a good amount. <laughs> Clacky, yes, this looks like some shapes. Do you have any questions about the shapes? Nope. I'm just going to take a screenshot of it and study it. Well, you later. have the link. The link's not going to disappear, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. Awesome. <laughs> Um, let's see what else about, yeah, I think I covered everything I wanted to about shapes. So let's move on to the next thing, which is going to be some game reviews. Let's, let's dive in. Mm. So I did look at all of your games beforehand, but I didn't plan out exactly what I was going to say about them. So let's just dive into the first one and we'll see what we see oh yes this game is a fun one mm -hmm. i am watching uh, we were black and so far so good mm. okay nice approach all right so this was the first kind of deviation i would say um mm -hmm. remember last week when i was said when we're kicked stand up well mm -hmm. uh i didn't stand up I mean, I, it's I, it's kind of like stand up. I would expect I would expect number one mm -hmm. um, to drill into the third line. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit of a deviation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and you would expect after this white to maybe do something like this and then make your base afterwards. Mm. So you were trying to make a base. I appreciate that. But yeah, if you're kicked, stand. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay and so now mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity to talk about shape you have mm -hmm. these two stones and this stone so what kind of shape might you make 
from that? Uh, it looks very similar to that L shape, but it's I think it's one square off. Let's see. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, I'll check later. Who <laughs> just followed? Um, let's see. Um, let's see here. Two stones into the right. It it looks very. Actually, I can't match any of them right now. Oh, I bet maybe, you can. Maybe N. Maybe N. Maybe N. Is it N? It's a it's a table shape. You can make. Is it a table this. shape? Yep. So I just put yeah, it on the yeah. board. All right. Yeah. So okay. that's going to be the nice shape you can make from those stones. Okay. And it's it's fairly unassailable, and it keeps your stones connected together. So I would I would definitely go for a table here. I wouldn't tanuki this. Okay. Um, I wouldn't play away from that just because it's it's so easy for your opponent to cut through now, mm -hmm. and then all of your stones are in trouble. Not that your opponent did that right away. I don't think. Yeah, they they didn't punish you for it, but mm -hmm. I was I was a little curious about this move here. This Mary eight move. Mm hmm. Was it a misclick or what was the plan? So the plan was to create a base because I have three stones in a row. And so I figured, okay, well, I'm just going to try to surround him, gain more influence in the middle of the board, as well as defining a base right there. Okay. So your bases mm -hmm. are always along the edge of the board. Oh, okay. Bases don't go into the center, really. So if you wanted a base for your three stones, mm -hmm. um, you would extend out this way, along the edge. Okay. Yep. So it's, uh, bases are always in the uh, closer to the edges of the board. Got it. Okay, I think Correct. that's where I was confused on from last week. Okay. Yep. So we can we can think of this as... One metaphor for the board, and I know this is a little bit contrary to opening theory, but one metaphor for the board is that the first three lines are kind of like the ground, and then the middle of the board is like the sky. Let's put okay. a little cloud up here. And so, and you know, of course, it rotates all the way around the board, right? But the middle of the board mm -hmm. is the sky. So if you mm -hmm. if you're creating uh like a a campground uh, or putting up a tent, then you plant your stakes into the ground, mm -hmm. and that's where that's where the idea of a base comes from is that you're you're putting your little tent poles, um, you know here, and you have one here, and now you have mm -hmm. a nice little house, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's kind of the metaphor. I hope. <laughs> I I hope that's a little more memorable. Yep. So we tanuki these these stones are in a lot of trouble, I would say. So definitely making the shape here is a good idea. Again, the table shape is is pretty ideal and it it starts to connect with with the delta stone as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay. And you're making a base again, right? Mm hmm So let's do a knight's move. We don't want to play a second line in the opening if we can help it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're surrounding your opponent. I appreciate that. So this one, I think we can just hane. But that's that's a bit of reading. Um, basically, if white cuts, oh, sorry, wrong direction, derp. Why do I think this works? Oh, yeah, they'll come out, and then you just jump, and they have to run, and we have a flexible shape. Mm hmm But yeah, I guess extending, extending is fine. In fact, that's a better connection. You made the better connection. I'm sorry, I had a brain fart. <laughs> this is a good connection. Thanks. <laughs> I did something right, guys. Yeah, I did I, something I, right. No, you you do a lot of things right. 
Awesome. Okay, uh, we're still in the opening, so let's not attack yet. Mm. I would say. No, the reason why I attacked, and and this was my thought process because uh, I I remember that uh, to make a base, I I I, I mistook it for uh, however many stones you have. That's how many spaces you're allowed to skip before you need to place another stone. So that two space in between, I thought I was like, oh, this guy screwed up. I'm gonna play on C five and cut him away. Uh, uh okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's the whole point of that C five move. I, I forgot that it's a space plus one. Yep. Um yep. yeah. So and, and <laughs> you see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So two space bases are super nice. They're very strong mm -hmm. on the third line. Uh they're they can be attacked, but it's mm -hmm. difficult. And then again, uh we wanna save attacking until all of our opening moves are done. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't need to attack right away. There's still lots of opening moves left. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm just marking some of the opening moves. So definitely focus on, on waiting. Be patient. You don't have to attack right away. Uh, mm -hmm. I know in my games, like if you've watched my games, I like to start fights early. And part of that is for entertainment. Do not be fooled. <laughs> it's not always good and it's often not good so for you at double digit q uh bide your time i would say mm. wait wait till all of the opening moves are taken before you start attacking mm -hmm. yep so this did not go well and mm -hmm. that's okay that's just fighting experience Uh, yeah, you're connecting your stones. That's a good idea. Yeah, those stones are doomed, so we... Mm. Yeah, it's fun to try things. Why not? <laughs> Same idea here. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of what we want to consider... Um, is that you don't need to attach to your opponent to kill them. You can kill them from a distance. So if you want to kill them, uh, play a little farther away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, shooting a gun is, is more effective than bear hugging someone to death, right? So mm -hmm. uh, attack from a little bit more of a distance, if, if you can. I mean, sometimes it's going to be a wrestling match, and that's just the way it is. But if you can attack from afar, from a position of strength, you're going to be better off. And then this is just the fighting. Uh... Yeah, those stones are doomed. So now this is a great time to just be like, you know what? These stones are trash. Let's... Let's play. Let's play a move elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know, and, and surround fifteen points of territory somewhere else. Ah, as Peregrill mentions, attaching to something makes not only yourself but your opponent stronger. Mm. So attaching attaching to the stones to your opponent's stones tends to make them stronger. Yep, yep, yep. So this is another instance. We don't need to attach to this. Just surround your territory. Mm. Yeah, and there was no need to connect that there, I don't think. Yep, so again, take a big move. Uh, okay. Oof. I believe this is where a, a fantastic corner battle is going to play out. If I can yep. remember, this is the game. Mm -hmm. So don't lose your nerve. Just make your eye. Mm-hmm. 
And that that's the end of it, really. Mm. Uh, what do they do? This is fine. Oof. This is not as fine. <laughs> what? Yep. What? Yep. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, this was a fantastic quarter battle. I was losing the whole thing. He should have just left, but uh, I... I, I I thought this was a sumo go problem, so I was just I kept going, and uh, he fell for yeah. it. So yep, yep. So so like we were talking about, <laughs> it works. It works. <laughs> if it works, it works exactly. Quacky, yep. you're right. So just like what we talked about, knight's moves are good for surrounding and attacking things. So I would expect a knight's move here. Mm. Um, you can also in this position consider the kosumi. Um, they're probably gonna jump if you do though, and you can't disconnect them then. So knight's mm -hmm. moves are super nice because if they jump, you just hane, and, you know, it turns into something where you can continue to make strong shapes Okay. while they flounder. Added benefit, you're building up a wall towards your potential and surrounding, you know, a fat chunk of points. So I would have expected White to play in the middle of the elephant's eye right away. That kind mm -hmm. of two-space diagonal is called an elephant's eye, and uh, the proverb is to, to immediately play inside of it. So. Mm. Yeah, the honeys, hmm. So this is another opportunity for us to either make a bamboo shape or a mm -hmm. table shape. Very flexible. Either one would probably be fine. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So I gotta ask what your goal is with K11, or K14, excuse me. Uh, With K14, I wanted to, let me see, what was I planning to do? Uh, Pretty much solidify my, my territory, Uh, that little outline bubble that you see right there, while also putting pressure on uh, on his tiny little growing bubble in the J13 area. Um, so pretty much trying to create a border around there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so let's let's analyze this situation for a hot second. This mm -hmm. group has three eyes. It is unassailable. It is 100% alive. Okay. So if you want to surround your territory mm -hmm. um again you'll want to just take like a knight's move here okay and not attach to your opponent okay yep you're not gonna really be able to attack them in the center i mean maybe in this game it worked out that you could but yeah mm -hmm. this this damages you actually in general Yeah, this this turned out painful for you. So <laughs> yeah, yep. You want to make painful. You know, you could even consider from here um, doing two one space jumps, and if they poke, we can we can do something like this. It's okay, and mm. then you only lose like four stones instead. But a little bit earlier, that knight's move would have been real nice. Yeah, from here, super nice. And as Clacky mentioned, it also fixes that elephant's eye shape we talked about. Mm. So now it's it's just a different situation. You still might lose four stones, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Tough to counterattack this, yeah. 
We don't have enough liberties. Boop, boop. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I don't think the rest of this is worth reviewing, so let's do the next one. <laughs> Yay. The next one was a weird one. A very weird one. The Elven Fairy? Was it the Elven Fairy? Is that? No, sorry, the third one. Yeah, the, the third, third one was weird. Yeah, yeah. Third one was a weird one. Okay. Uh, we are white. We're good, we're good. good. Hold on, give me a second. There we go. There we go. Awesome. You with me? Okay, cool. So, we, we talked about this a little bit in the Discord. Um, so your opponent took an extension. Mm -hmm. So you want to take their enclosure away. Mm. You can think of those as a pair. The extension is always on um, a different side than the enclosure. So if they take the extension here, mm -hmm. then the enclosure is always going to be on the adjoining side around the stone. So I just wanted to solidify that concept. Um, you, playing what you did is is playable. It's OK to take your own enclosure. OK. But it's just because they have that extension, taking their enclosure is a little bit bigger, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So they took an additional extension. So now it becomes, and you you probably don't know this Joseki yet, and that's OK. Um, so the, the key point when your opponent has a 3-3 three, three is a 4-4. Four, four. If you didn't take you know the, the enclosure away earlier, Mm -hmm. And this can go lots of different ways. Um, but the simplest, the one that's not played as often, but it is simpler, is this one. Okay. So let's, let's do that again. They had a 3-3, three, three, so we took a 4-4. Four, four. Opponent stood up, so we stand up. Then opponent slid. So we two space jumped. Okay. And this is only going to get you influence. Okay. Then opponent slid again. And we two space jumped again. Okay. Um, now, in this particular position, this isn't necessarily an even result. But if I recall, this is better than what we got. This can go another way too, depending on the situation. Um, we can instead turn here after the slide then opponent will come out to the center and then then we make a base on the side usually three space but because that stone is there we would only do a two space so this is another option hmm. yeah white basically takes black potential away that's why it's a reasonable result exactly hmm. Oh, Peregrill is saying that the, the uh, taking taking the two space highs is is actually good in this situation since they have the double wing. Mm -hmm. So you're right. You you took an enclosure away. That was the idea. Opponent kicked you, so you stood up. That's great. Then what did we do? We tanukied. Okay. Uh, you might consider making some eye shape here first, one way or another. Actually, I, th I think it's okay to jump and double approach. This is okay. I might do a knight's move instead, but I, I think it's an okay direction. Mm. Uh, I might play one more move to connect this more solidly, make the dog's face. Nice little shape there. Okay. Yep. So in the opening, and I know I mentioned this in Discord as well, let's take the wider side of the board. So currently the widest side of the board is the top side because there's probably around 10 or 11 spaces on the top. 11 spaces on top. So it's the widest side of the board. And they took an extension, so you want to take the enclosure that's on the adjoining side. So they have this extension. 
So we're going to take away the enclosure here. And it also happens to be the widest side of the board, so three wins. Okay, they attach to you. It's kind of funky, but we can live with it. Oh, they're doing something complicated. Never mind. They simplified it for you. That's very nice. <laughs> so um, after this, now you can consider this to be a three high wall. So I would consider going one, two, three, four spaces for your extension. Or even play high. High would be okay in this situation, I think. You know, attacking their stone, it, it doesn't hurt either. Make a, make a taller wall. Now we took the extension? No, we didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, you made a base on top. That's fine as well. Now we took the extension? No, we're still surrounding. Okay. I hope we killed them. Did we kill them? I think so. Yes. All right. Good. You made the right choice then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, connect our stones. Okay. Probably. Yeah, because now we can't connect, and those are dead, right? Unless some double-digit Q magic happens a little later. <laughs> There's always a DTK magic here. There is. Yeah, I know. I know all about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're just uh, fighting. Yeah, those are doomed. No, Elven Fairy was a really good reader, at least for some of them. I, I didn't read clearly enough, and they were able to box me in in a lot of stuff. So, Oh, Paragirl's right. You can live in the upper left corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, never mind. Forget what I said. It's fine. I, ho I hope you're realizing one key thing is about, about Go, and life in general, is just because the player is stronger doesn't mean they're infallible. <laughs> My word is not law. <laughs> you get to have your own thoughts and try your own stuff. It's, it's all good. Uh, we're building a giant wall. Yeah, basically this game's over. We're really winning now, right? There we go, we took the extension, woo! Oh, mm-hmm. I would consider, if they kicked us, I would probably drop down here. Uh, Cause it's really difficult after this to live for black. You have so much strength all the way around. Mm-hmm. But I can't remember. You might have still killed them, right? I don't remember. Yeah, you're making lots of weak shapes right now, so... No, I did yeah, not it's... kill them. They, no. they were able to live, yeah. Yeah, it just lived. Yep. So that's that, you know, just just extending up. Also, you, you self-peeped here. Mm -hmm. So you did a one-space jump. That's a strong shape, but... Black already has a stone here. So they can just push up directly. In, in fact, they probably should have. Black should have punished you a little bit more. Yeah, I, the, the reason why I did a one space jump was uh, I kept getting mixed up between how many spaces in between I was supposed to put for building another base. And so, like, th this game was me trying to train on understanding what bases were. And I think uh, that jump to Q11 was that. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, your base, you already made your base. Mm. This is your base. Because mm -hmm. it digs into the edge. So that's, it's good that we clarified that understanding that the base mm. works with mm. the edge. Yep, yep. Uh, Peregrill is saying, 
It's oh, come on. Maybe attack from this side too. It's very strong. Oh. Yep. Because you're making your base on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. And then black really has nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that happened. Black lived. Good for black. Yep, just extend. That's good. Uh, the wedge is curious. Maybe I would consider this. But let's see what happened. Oh, why didn't they capture? Black could have played the call. Mm -hmm. This is really good for Black and really bad for you. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. interesting. I think they were scared. Uh, I think you're right. I think they were scared. Mm -hmm. All right, let's 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 go to the Cuckoo Crazy game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Cuckoo Crazy was a weird one. A very weird one. Well, I mean, it's not fair to call them crazy. When you're a beginner, you just don't know what you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, for people who do know, it looks crazy. But if you don't know, it's not crazy at all. We are white in this game. All right, you took some corners. They attached to you. This was really weird. Um, I would just stand up. I did something. Yeah. Yeah, you Hane, Hane at the attach is, is decent. Mm. And then what was our follow up? Dropping. That's okay. And then we did something strange, right? Yeah, this is strange. Mm -hmm. So they're taking your corner. Just, just Atari. Take your corner. Be happy. Mm. They have a really weak group that only has three liberties, so they got to run away somehow anyway. Okay, they attached again. Okay, we stood up this time. That's great. Uh, what do we do now? I would say just get ahead of them, perhaps. Or honey at the head of two stones is also a proverb. So that would be fine. Or what did we play? We played away. Okay. Um, that's, that's playable. That's all right. Yep, let's make our base along the side. And then, secondly, let's not self-peep. That's that self-peep shape. This is really bad. Um, Don't do that. Got it. When when your opponent has a stone right there, don't don't jump. Mm. Like the one space jump is a great shape. It's a very strong, flexible shape unless there's a opponent stone right there. Yeah, black cut through you as they should have. Mm, okay. Yeah, this is this is all right. Opponents a little cuckoo bananas. I mean, they just they don't know. So that was the end. Very fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then I think this next game is the one that inspired you know that inspired me to look more at shapes. So let's review the next game. This one was a fun game. I played this this morning. So. Yeah, yeah, it looked fun. I was, I liked it. I like this game. Next game. Okay, we are black. We took a 4-4 four, four and a 3-4. Great. All right. Uh, right idea. Wrong spot. Right off the bat. Um, so knight's move approach is great, but the knight's move you want with a 3-4 stone is here. Yep, or here. And then, secondly, um, we call this white having a stone that faces you. 
So it's mm-hmm. really, it's really delicious for you to approach the one that's facing you. Okay. Um. So why was why was my move uh, incorrect then? Why was that not the best move? So it's because it makes it too easy for white to surround their corner. Wow. Uh, okay. And then you don't have a good follow-up because you're already undercut. So since this move is on the three li- third, third line and you're on the fourth line, you're already undercut. Mm. So even if you make a base here, White can just take it all away. Okay. So if we look at the other, the other direction for that particular corner, if we play, I don't know, even high, then you would expect something like this. Mm-hmm. And you get a base along the side, they get a little, they get a corner, of course. But it's, you have good follow-ups after the approach, basically. Or, of course, if you approach low, which there are lots of variations to approaching low. But then you, you can play even this way if you want. Something like that. Again, there's lots of variations to the low approach, so I'm not going to go over them all, but yeah. <laughs> when they have a 3-4, take the 5-3. Take the five, five, or 5-4. So, like I said, right idea, uh, wrong spot. Okay, this is playable. Uh, that's that's okay. No need after that to keep attacking. They already have their base. They have a flexible shape, so play away for for a bigger point. And you already have a base too. You're you have this base here. It may be a little bit wide, but I think it functions that way. I would tanuki here. Yeah, again, uh, they're they're alive, so let's play away. Okay, great. There we go. Yep. Again, when they when you approach high like that and they attach, you should honey. Oh, if, did not know that. Okay. If if they draw back, then you'll connect. This is the easiest one. They connect. Mm. They one space jump, and then we take our three space base. Mm. Yeah, because I thought that if you get kicked or if you if they attach, then take a step back and then go at them. That's why I took a base right away. Oh yeah, that's that's fine. I I understand the thinking. Okay. This is this is a Joseki. It's kind of a set pattern. Okay. Um, it's gonna happen in a lot of your games. <laughs> Try back, connect. Oh, not that one. <laughs> it's just this is the simplest form of of these variations. There are other variations, but okay. You're splitting. That's good. Uh, definitely look at if you want to split being on the third line. Where would the move be? Maybe here? Mm-hmm. So the third line puts your tent stakes into the ground. The fourth line means you want influence. You don't actually want territory there. Mm-hmm. Depending. I mean, there's exceptions to everything, but yeah. So this is going to be a little bit hard for you to hold on to. And yet we held on to it. Okay. I'd sacrifice the stone in Sente and then play elsewhere. Because what you're saying with your wall is I want this. Or I want to attack over there. <laughs> and so this, this enclosure works nicely with that goal.
Yep, they didn't actually have to respond to any of that. And you don't have to connect here. Okay, we did get that enclosure. That's great. <clears throat> so they peeped. The proverb is like, even an idiot connects at the peep, but it's not really necessary here. I would just make good shape around. And I think that's what you tried to do, right? Oh, a little too yeah. far away. Yeah, uh, I was trying I to read a couple steps ahead, and uh, I, I could see that if I let him build his thing, uh, he's eventually going to get influence in the middle. So I decided to try to build uh, where I can defend, but also gain influence in the middle. Hence why I, I did a double space away, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would still... Connecting is really strong here, though. That stone has very few places to go. Um, mm. What are they going to do? Maybe jump that way? Paragrill wouldn't connect. I know, I know. But it is, it's not a bad option. But we need something pretty active. Like if they cut, we're going to probably surround them, but it's a big fight. So connecting simplifies things. Jump from the lower group, yeah. Yep. Other players are saying they would end 12. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fair. Um, so they're saying, just do this. So if they cut, then they have to run. But this is like, you really want to fight them. So yeah, connecting connecting is a bit of a chicken move, but the Mary Mary fourteen may be a little bit far away. Paragrill would take cash first, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And you did kill this group, if I recall. Yes, I did. So nice kill. Mm-hmm. And you're working on surrounding. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I was puzzled by this move. Uh, that move was Went trying like that. to surround. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't want them to connect out. So they're going to tarry you. You have to take. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get out. But this, I don't know. I wouldn't even play that way necessarily. You've already got your profit. With the four stones you took, plus the top side. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And 10 to 010. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, so... I think this was fine, though. You're still attacking them. Mm -hmm. Which is good. I like the throw in. It doesn't help you in this case, but I like the idea behind it. I would just extend out. Mm. So here's the concept. The main concept to this fight is you're already strong here, uh -huh. but you're weak over here. So you want to make your weaker group stronger instead of defending, defending the. Um, or attacking it's good to attack from the strong group but yeah you want you want to make the weak group a little bit stronger so again after this after they connected which they shouldn't have but after they do extend your weaker group and this is also nice later if they run out let's say that they escape then all of a sudden this is yours which is so vague. Pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. But they could easily yeah. play in there and kill me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're still running, right? Mm -hmm. um, that group is still weak, so. 
so where were we back? Yeah, before that. Whose move is it? Black's? Yeah, you can just keep on extending. You could even Hane here just for giggles. Um, and then then just cap, and all of a sudden, like, you have half the board. Mm -hmm. Probably. I mean, white might weasel their way down here and live somewhere. Mm -hmm. But let's say they live small, and you get stones all along here in the process. I mean, you still have one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixty points Ooh. there, which is quite a lot. So, yep. Yeah. Uh huh. The fight got really complicated. And I think. What did we do? And then we connected. Okay. So we have three liberties. And white has three. I think the AI wanted you to extend here first, right? Yeah. But then if that happens, then I'm pretty much. The the black group is gone. Are you sure? I think so. Because if I if I use that move, I still have one, two, three liberties to attach. He has one, two, three to kill my black group, right? Oh, there's a fourth one. No? Wait, watch. Okay, okay I'm so watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. it's I'm more it's more complicated than you think. Okay. So you're you're like they're gonna take this liberty, right? Yeah. This has potential to save your group. Ah. Uh. This has potential to save your group. This has potential to save your group. But then he take, takes the Atari, wouldn't he? And then it's a ladder. Oh. And well, you win the Liberty after wins. We, Okay, well, after we play at the 7, wouldn't he just play at N6, capture that stone sure okay now this one <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's still a ladder oh okay <laughs> hmm. so yeah yep it's complicated though it's hard to read that out i could not read that i i knew my two stones were stuck and so i was just like oh my gosh he has he has three liberties to kill me i have three liberties to kill him and now it's his move I lost that group, and that that was in my mind already. Yep. Mm. So, but the the other groups around it have fewer than three, so that's mm -hmm. that's why we can get away with it. I see. Okay. And then also, if we extend uh, at one, and they don't take two, let's say they take the stone instead, then now we win the liberty race. Mm-hmm. Yep. I see. Yeah, I literally, I literally spent three minutes out of the five just on that next move. So I was, oh, I, was geez. I was stumped. Yeah. And so I have the benefit of having seen the AI move, right? And then, you know, just lots of experience with these kinds of fiddly mm -hmm. fights. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see how that's easy to miss. It's easy to miss. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to show you there was there was hope. There was light at the end of the tunnel. I was so bummed when I lost that. I was like, oh, this I is a, this, this is GG <laughs> right here. Yeah, it feels, oh, feels man. bad, man. Oh, well. This was a fun game, though. I, I, I had so much fun with this game. I mean, yeah, I think you played really well. Thank you. And I was trying to incorporate a lot of the lessons that you taught in, in, in this game. It, mm -hmm. it does take a while for me, but yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Liberties. Yep. Shoot. Still a good game. Very good game. So mm -hmm. let's see. I only showed you a few examples of shapes, but I definitely want you to be mindful of shapes. Okay. Uh, also, this week, try to focus on surrounding, not attaching. Um, it is the surrounding game, not the attaching game. Mm -hmm. So um, surround. Remember, you can kill things from a distance. You don't have to kill them up close and personal. You don't have to look in their eyes, all right? Um, <laughs> you I, don't just have have to, I don't have to open the peephole for them. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to shoot cool. their eyes out, but you don't have to look in their <laughs> eyes. All right. Uh, 
Uh, don't get too attached to the way cheesy. That's fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, do you have any questions for me or anything you'd like to discuss or anything you'd like me to explain further? Okay, so I, I just want to know from your perspective as the teacher. Now you, we've we've what, had two, three weeks of, of lessons at this point, I believe. Yep, three exactly. Three exactly. How well am I improving? Am I am I improving at a good rate from your own experience, or uh, do I need to take some more time to reflect on the game, or what is it that uh, that you see at least from a teacher uh, standpoint for your student, which is me? <laughs> I think you're improving well, so okay. it just takes time. Okay. So have you ever? I don't know if you learned a musical instrument or you've had maybe a little brother or sister, an older brother and sister who started learning a musical instrument and they brought it home the first day and they had their first three lessons, you know, one to three lessons and they sound terrible, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like three weeks of playing an instrument, you're not going to be good at it. Mm -hmm. um, go, go is that kind of skill. It takes mm -hmm. time. And so your improvements are still improvements although you know there's just a, a really big lot of things to to go through um yeah there's there's just a lot to this game right so you are imp improving at your opening um you are definitely being more mindful about making bases but again, I just want to encourage you to understand that this this is a game that it just takes time. So you're not gonna you're not gonna reach one dawn in a week unless you're a super genius, and that's okay. Um, but I do see improvements, like specifically in your opening. Why mm -hmm. is this board not changing? And I I think in those aspects that we've went over, you've improved a lot. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to know from from your the the teacher standpoint how how well is the student doing? So thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're for the most part you're listening to me, and then you're showing my weaknesses as a teacher. Where um, sometimes like you forget to make things explicit just because you're so used to the concept. So um, like the base we went over last week, there were some things. I didn't make explicit, and so we discovered that together, okay. which was very, very good for me as a teacher. Um, yeah, so all awesome. in all good. Awesome. Do you, well, are you finding the lessons helpful for yourself? I guess I should ask. Yes, you. I am. I'm actually, I'm actually able to see more now, um, and uh, just in just in the games in general. I I know that uh, when I'm like reviewing games, uh, I I see it from a. a how how would I put it from an observation standpoint? Like if I look at other people's game, then I can see oh this is what why they're doing it. But when I'm in the game itself, uh, my mind is so focused on certain things that I just blank out. Absolutely. And so, yep. um, just having your lessons helps solidify a lot of those concepts, and I'm trying to get to the point where it's like second nature. Um, yep, that, I, takes I, I, that takes a lot of time. Yes, <laughs> but it is helping. I, I, I'm. I'm seeing more clearly on the board, at least uh, from my own gameplay. Awesome. Uh, I play I play against AI, and I'm able to beat you know a 14 Q AI now. Uh, before nice. it was extremely hard, but now I'm able to see, beat them uh, uh, on crazy stones. Um, so now it's just trying to translate that into OGS and play against real people. Yeah, because real people do weird stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like way weirder than the AI does. And that's mm -hmm. why I also encourage you to play real people because mm -hmm. um, it forces you to be a lot more flexible with your planning, especially at double digit Q level. You have no idea what they're going to do. <laughs> we got no have idea. Some more DK magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> at certain points they play the like absolutely genius sequences, right? Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're doing, but you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're playing how they feel and that's fantastic. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, playing real people exposes you to lots of different ideas, which is really important. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Awesome. Well, that, uh, pretty much the same homework, a few games. Uh, okay. Focus on making shapes, but keep keep doing your opening theory. Keep making your bases, of course. 
Okay. And then, um, oh, I forgot to ask you what Joseki you learned this week. The Joseki I learned this week was the three three invasion. I'm not I'm not very familiar with it. I know it's kind of like a review of what we did last week, but I wanted to solidify in it. So it was uh, I start on the four four. Um, the opponent goes into my three three area, and mm -hmm. um, the Joseki essentially was called the flying knives Joseki move uh, from OGS. I I don't know what it is. Uh, the sequence. Okay, right let me that. let me get the board that you have up. Okay. Oh, one second. And we'll go over this together. You're going to teach me the Joseki that you learned. Mm -hmm. so, four, so what's the four. first move? It's a 4-4, four, four, right? So yeah, I'll play four, a 4-4. Four, four. Four. And, and then the opponent, because the reason why I, I wanted to review this is because um, I always get invaded by 3-3. Three, three, so the opponent will play at the 3-3, three, three, right? Uh-huh. 3-3 three, three star point. Uh, yep. And then I would extend down. I believe it's extending down. Sure, one way or the other. Yep. And, and then they they attach, so that we we have a double extend. And then I would play. Wait, wait, wait. What move do they play? So they play at the R four. Okay, they extend. Okay. And, yeah. So they extend up or down. I don't know how to say. It. So a lot, whatever. Okay. Yep. And then I would play one space away from their connection point. So I would play at, um, what is it, R6, because I want to cap them. And then that, that was okay, the story yep. at least I told me. So I, I want to cap them, but then they would play at, uh, they would attach to my cap. And then from there. Disattach? Uh, S6? Yeah. S6, yes. They'll, they'll attach at S6. And then from there. That was as far as I could remember. <laughs> that everything else just goes haywire from there. So uh, I could honey them, honey at a single stone. Uh, I believe what their move would be would be to step back at, from the honey to get more liberty. So maybe if I honey at the S7, they will go down to, I don't know, um, S5, S5 yeah. or R5 maybe. I, I'm not too sure. So And then that just goes crazy from there. And so that was pretty much the path that I was seeing. There's there's lots of variations to this, yes. Okay. So you're right. There are lots of variations. Mm -hmm. That will probably get you far enough. Nope. Got it. <laughs> so the the idea behind R6 is that Black wants Sente um, at the end of the sequence. Okay. So you're right. There could be an attach. A lot of times white will just play R5, and then you extend up. And then white hanes, and then you can play away mm -hmm. anywhere on the board. Um, after you play away, and way later in the game, white might do this, and then you just connect. Mm. So that's this is probably the simplest version of that kind of knight's move, Joseki. But yeah, mm. I, I would I would say do the do the easier variation if you can. But if you enjoy <laughs> the complicated Joseki, I didn't more, know pa a, more power was, to you. I was just I was just on the Joseki on OGS, and I was like, oh, this is the first move that the opponents will play. So I'm, just, <laughs> I'm looking at that. I was like, wow, this is super complicated. It's super complicated. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's an easier one. You can you can. It's a little easier. Um, I see that now. <laughs> And again, you can you can well, mm -hmm. wait Ohane and you can play anywhere. Not here, was, but, you know, play away. Mm -hmm. And there was one other thing that I wanted to ask you, just from your I know we're a little bit over time, but I wanted to ask That's you. Okay. Um I I saw that there was a uh, I, I was watching some sort of documentary or some uh -huh. sort of game or past game, and one of the players said that, well, usually uh you would if you had a single stone. Uh, on the board, and you wanted to make a base, you would generally jump two spaces away to Correct, put yeah. a foothold, right? Uh, but they say that you could also have a five space in between, and then mm -hmm. on the six space you would place your stones. So you have two stones, five base, uh, five spaces in between, and they say that that you could also create a very strong foothold. So in your opinion, would that work? From your own experience two, from your games? One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. So this is more like an extension 
than mm-hmm. than a base. Okay. Because frankly, you know, if white gets two moves in a row, they can mm-hmm. they can make a base inside your base. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's sort of what we talked about last week where mm-hmm. if you have a wall, mm-hmm. you can extend five spaces. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five. But five is the max. Okay. So if you have a five high wall, you don't extend six spaces. It's always five mm-hmm. for your base. So it's basically mm-hmm. two spaces up to five spaces. Okay. So I, yeah, I, I guess I guess uh, the person used a, a wrong terminology name. It's more of an extension than a base. Okay. It kind of is, yeah. Because okay. if you only have a one stone, if if you only have a one stone high wall, then two spaces is going to be your ideal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Awesome. You can go three spaces, you're going to get invaded, and that's okay, depending on mm-hmm. the situation. But okay. two spaces is definitely ideal. Cool. All right. Well, All thank right. you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> Have a great I week. I love these weapons. Yep, you too. Bye, everyone. See ya. Later. All right, everybody. Uh, if you are interested in double digit Q lessons, um, you can sign up at mysimplybook.me. Um, I teach 20Q to 12Q or 10Q, somewhere in there. DDK, basically. Um, Beyond that, I would pass you off to a different teacher. There are a few reasons for that. One, I have a partnership with a very strong teacher, and I don't want to uh, take students away from him if I can help it. And secondly, um, I'm only between one and three, Don, so I feel most comfortable teaching double-digit cues. I feel I definitely have enough expertise to let them know uh, where they could improve. Uh, but yeah, hit me up on or hit me up on Discord if you want to know more about it. The lessons are ten dollars for a one hour lesson. I spend a little bit more time than that um, looking at your games beforehand and planning out a tailored lesson just for you. Um, yeah, you're very welcome, Kilton Ninja. Thanks for hanging out. But yeah, I would love to teach more students. Um, I think Indy is my fourth student, and I've been teaching for about a year, so maybe a little over a year off and on. So yeah. I'm gaining experience as a teacher, so it's good for me. And then I just love watching people grow and learn things. So I would love to add more people to the Dago Sensei Dojo. 